Okay. <clears throat> Here is the strategy that I want to go with. We're going to tape the concert live, all right? Get a full shot of that. Then I want to slice in different parts of the interview, okay? Yeah, whatever, man. All right. It's a new show. I want to grab the audience quick while I got them there. I don't want us to look like amateurs or idiots, so we'll work together. Yeah, there's not much to look at around here now that I'm looking. Okay, you went to high school in New Jersey, isn't that right? Except maybe her. Who? The one you said hello to when we came in. She looks like a real possibility. Oh, uh, let's just let's just stick to the interview for now, okay, man? Yeah, how about you saying hello again? I'll go with you. Hey, you'd be wasting your time. No, I don't waste my time. Now. Frisco, I told you I'm busy. Yeah. I know you told me that. Yeah, but the Duke insisted. The who? No, the who, that's another act, Lou. I say I got my own. No, it needs work. Well, um, maybe you want to give me pointers like, in an hour? Some other year. Felicia, if you're having a problem, we can go back to my office. I think it's the Duke that's having the problem. No way, babe. I just went platinum again last week. Back to your castle, Duke, and when you cross the moat, raise the drawbridge. You, uh, want to go back and sit down then? No, man, I'm just getting started. Where did you find this specimen at the zoo? Let's go, huh? Wait a minute. You know, a million girls in this country would lay down and die for five minutes alone with me. You've got that backwards, don't you? Five minutes alone with you, I would probably die from the fumes. Now take a hike. Pretty impressive, kid. You guys a jerk. See ya. Uh, don't forget about our, our strategy, right? We're gonna get together and discuss about the bachelor party and about the dinner for Tony and Tanya. I didn't forget. I'll see you here at four, okay? Fine. I wonder if Tony and Tanya are planning on a honeymoon. And if not, they're dedicated. Mm -hmm. well, they can always get a room at the hospital. Thank you. Ah, Helen, there you are. I just called your office. You got a minute? Yeah, sure, of course. Good. Hey, listen, before I forget, I wanted to tell you. Sunday afternoon was really great. It was good time, good drinks, good talking. We really must do it more often. We will do it again. In fact, it's that talk that I wanted to see you about. I've made some cutaway sketches of the ship that we had discussed. You like them? It's great. What are, what are these here? Operating rooms? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And here on the forward end of the ship, we'd set up some display areas where we could show all of the latest hospital and medical equipment. Mm -hmm. I figured we could give them everything from new insulin pumps to plastic joints. Mm -hmm. We staff the ship with the best people that we can find, and we go all over the world giving demonstrations in all kinds of ports. It certainly sounds like it has great possibilities. Oh, it has a lot more than possibilities, my friend. We could sell tons of medical equipment. Do you realize that doctors and hospital purchasing agents would have to take in 40 medical conventions just to see what we're going to give them on one ship? Well, it's going to spread a lot of goodwill. Uh-huh. It's also going to make a whole, whole lot of money. And I mean a lot of money. Yeah, that too. I think it's wonderful you worked out all these details so fast. Mm -hmm. I might just say I'm highly motivated. What, to build the ship? To make a pile of money. Quite honestly, Jimmy Lee and his damn 20 million gets to me. Listen, that's my family's 20 million. It gets to me as well. Mm. I can imagine. You know, we're going to need financing. Any chance of you approaching your father? No. He'd know it was a good idea and he'd steal it. You can say that about your own father? You bet. When it comes to a dollar, you got to watch out for my father. You know something? When I was in high school, I simply asked him for an advance on my allowance. And he wouldn't give it to you? Oh, he would give it to me at 15% interest with the collateral up front. No, I think, much as I hate to admit it, the man we've got to go and see is Sean Donnelly. Where do you hate to admit that? Because so far, his only interest in the Quartermain family has been my wife. But I'm going to have to put that aside because he's absolutely perfect for this proposition. Mm -hmm. And he already has a shipping company. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to call him and say we want to talk to him. Good, do it. Maybe there's a chance that he would meet with us today after work. The sooner we start making this fortune, the better. Okay. Put this through on the uh, speakerphone. That way, when he answers, you're going to be able to listen in. All right. You've reached the Garvey office. Oh, it's his answering machine. At the sound of the beep, please leave your message and a telephone number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hmm. Well, not 
point in leaving a message again. He's never going to return a call from a police official. Well, come on now. We should be able to come up with a message that would intrigue him enough that he'd call back. I'm trying to think of something. Too bad we can't have Brock call him. What? Well, Brock retained him. He'd certainly return a call from Brock, wouldn't he? Oh, did I ever say what a genius you were, Mr. Brock? <laughs> what? Mr. Who? Brock. In other words, you. Now, I'd, uh, I'd make this call myself, but I think the accent's probably going to be a giveaway. That'd be now, listen, sure. I'll tell you. Uh, when you call that bloody answering machine of his, say it's D.L. Brock, and uh, say that you want him to call you back. Garvey's got no way now that Brock's dead. All right. All right. But uh, <laughs> now, uh, what message will I leave? One he's going to pay attention to. Let's think. All right. Say you've got a new assignment for him. And for uh, an added kick, this time there's quite a bit of money in it. Okay, I'll make the call from my office. You know, this just might work. Of course it's going to work. Oh, incidentally, put it through my private line, the one that you can't trace. Uh, just one other thing. Is there any way that a court would construe this as entrapment? No. But you're right, it is a trap. All right, uh, it's a good one, too. Get on it. Okay. Sergeant, listen, get Ruby Anderson on the phone for me, will you? Yeah, she'll be at the diner. Uh, tell her I'd like to see her in my office as soon as possible. Please. Come on in, Jake. Have a seat. The commissioner's busy at the moment. He asked me to take the time and cooperate with you in any way I can. Well, I appreciate it, Ramsey. Did he hand down my request to you? Yes, he did. That's why I have these arrest sheets here. I had them sent down. They're records of crimes that were committed in the penthouse area the night that Brock was murdered. Anything I should pursue? Well, there's one that just came in. A Vincent Becker. He was apprehended today. What's the charge? Robbery. Here I have a list of the items he was trying to fence when we collared him. Including a car stereo that was stolen the night Brock was murdered. Where was it stolen, did this Becker character say? No, he didn't have to. The owner reported the theft, and he also gave us the serial number of the stereo, and they match. And the stereo was stolen from a parked car. Where was the car parked? Well, this is what I think might help you. The car was parked just a couple of doors down from the penthouse apartment building. That is terrific. He's still in custody, I hope. Yeah, he's being booked right now. I've got to talk to him, Ramsey. Can you set it up? Well, sure, but not right away. Booking comes first, and that does take a little time. When do you think I might question him? Well, later than tomorrow, maybe sooner. He could post bail by tomorrow. Oh, there's no way. We're holding him for 48 hours pending further charges. He's not going anywhere. This could be a big break for Bobby. The sooner, the better. Well, look, I'll make sure that you get to talk to him. I'll arrange it with the commissioner. Thanks, Ramsey. Right. Two doors! <laughs> I've got a hunch about this. All right, let's get down to the finer points of this operation. Juan... How many of us will it take to move the treasure from the crypt to the chopper? Well, to, to be really expeditious, uh, all four of us. All right. Slater? I'm all set. I'm ready to go. You figure out your flight plan yet? I fly the chopper from Texas to the side of the crypt and then back again. Anticipate any problems? None. Kitsy Quattle is my co-pilot. All right. <laughs> now, overconfidence has always bothered me. Yeah, that's right. Morgan? Well... I've arranged the first fuel stop for the copter at Torreon. That's, that's the halfway point. Next stop, I've arranged it for Mexico City. All right, so good. Mm. The cargo may give us a little trouble, so I have a forged manifest I'm carrying in my pocket, <laughs> just in case they were stopped. All right, fine. All right, then uh, Morgan flies in a chopper with Slater to Texas, right? right? Then he helps me move the treasure from the chopper to the truck. Right. Then we drive straight through from Texas to Port Charles. And when you arrive here, you transfer the treasure from the truck into the warehouse. That's right. All right, gentlemen, I think we should all get to work. Hmm? Oh, okay. You have a problem, Jack? Just a question. This is the time. What is it? We're storing the treasure here in the warehouse. So far, I've seen no area that looks safe. That's because I haven't shown it to you yet. Come on, it's your reward for being patient. I already told Linda to go to uh, lunch. Okay. Oh, uh, not the main one. Let's go this way.
everyone, it's Felicia. 